grass has added a great amount of texture and movement to the landscape. And with the wide variety of sizes and textures and heights, there's a plant, a grass for every situation. And so this year we decided to plant an entire garden with different types of grasses and we're going to feature these individually throughout the season. And I'm going to start here with this Mexican feather grass, Nasala tenuissima. And this is just a delightful, very graceful grass. It um, has very fine foliage, as you can see, and very dense. So it just produces this nice open mound. And the grass blades are so light that they move with just the slightest breeze. So they're always in motion. Um, the grass will mound to about, maybe about two feet or so, and it'll spread two to three feet. And it really is at its best in the springtime. It has the best green color. And before long, it'll start to flower. And I brought some plants out from the greenhouse, so they're a little bit ahead. And you can see they have these sort of silvery, uh, soft plumes at the top. So pretty soon, the rest of our grasses will be covered with that. Uh, Mexican feather grass is an Oklahoma proven plant. It's very drought tolerant. It's wonderful to use in a xeriscape garden. It's native to parts of Texas, the prairie areas of Texas and New Mexico as well as Mexico. Now most of our grasses in the late winter we cut them down to the ground but Mexican feather grass doesn't benefit from this type of uh, hard cutting and so in the springtime, sometimes you find dead foliage mixed in with the bright green stuff. And we found that just using a simple wide tooth comb and just combing up through the grass was a very easy way to clean them up and freshen them up. You can cut them back um, in the late winter, but unlike our other grasses, you only want to cut about one third of the length off um, from the top. And they really just have this beautiful, airy, airy feel to them. They look spectacular when they're planted in a mass. And uh, just to kind of show them off in a big group. Next to it, we have another plant that I wanted to feature. This is a corkscrew rush. And it's actually not a grass. Um, rushes are belong to a f the family Juniceae. And, um, they're perennial, mostly perennial herb herbaceous plants. Some of them are annuals. And they produce these very upright stems, which are their leaves, uh, actually, instead of stem. And this corkscrew rush is um, in the genus Juncus. And it, uh, the plants in that genus have more of a rounded or cylindrical um, leaf shape. And that's quite different from the flattened uh, leaf of our grasses. So that's one way to identify this as a rush. Um, this cultivar is called wild rumpus. So not all rushes have this uh, curly cute look, but this wild rumpus has these curled, twisted stems, which give it a really fun appearance. And this plant really stands out in the garden. I can't tell you how many people have stopped to ask about it. Um, so you want to give it a, a place where it's going to be very showy. It also works wonderfully in containers. Corkscrew rush is not particularly drought tolerant. It'll need um, consistent watering, but they, the plants actually tolerate moist conditions. So they're good in those wet spots of the landscape that are hard to keep dry where other plants might not survive so well. And um, this one is a solid green, this uh, wild rumpus. We also have a variegated cultivar in our patio called Frenzy. We have another non-grass plant here. This is red cordyline or cordyline australis. It's a plant from New Zealand. It's a subtropical or tender perennial and it's rather palm-like. Uh, we chose it because the very uh, long sword-like blades add so much color and structure to the garden. Now this plant can reach the size of a small tree in warm climates but it's not quite tolerant of the cold. Um, here we can expect it to reach about three feet inside, uh, in size and we need to bring the plant indoors in winter around still water. It is hardy to uh, around zone eight so in the far southern parts of the state you could try to overwinter it outdoors. Um, but again this is red cordyline and it's just a delightful plant to use in either sun or shade to add some striking color and texture.